Hello, welcome back to another episode of Classic Mini Restoration with me, Mini Tom. So, last video was a bit weird, I know, um, but this video is going to be about getting these doors sorted out. So, I have said door here, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a flat disc on my grinder, and I'm going to take away some of this edge, peel the old skin off, and uh, we'll make a start. Why not? Just get stuck in. I've made the measurements, um, I don't know if you can see them, I think I've wrote on there, sort of, frame to frame then top of the frame to actual bottom um, now it's got a seam weld down there I think has it got a seam weld on the other side I can't remember yeah so a seam weld and a spot weld by the looks of things as well the actual um, frame itself normally can crack down here but there's no cracks on that it's absolutely spot on so let's just get on with it right now I don't know where my uh, my face visor's gone, but I've got my, my safety glasses on anyway. Um, it's not good for getting, you know, something sparks getting up here. But as long as I'm careful, I should be okay. So I would advise a full set of goggles or a face mask. But I don't know where they are, so... I haven't used this since I moved house, so I've not had to use it, you see, so... Anyway, let's go on. Right, door skin's off, not too bad. Just notice there's a couple of spot welds. There's a spot weld there, and just in line with the, um, the door handle as well, there's a spot weld there. So, obviously, I've got some surface rust, which I'll have to just 
cut back and treat. There's some surface rust on there, which will have to just cut back and treat. So we'll grind that back, wire wheel it all out, and uh, cure rust it. But I'll get the other side of the lip off first. Um, I don't know if you can see we're grinding through the top, but you could see it separating. So it's quite easy to do it that way. You just got to be a bit careful you don't damage the lip too much. Um, yeah, bits of surface rust. Obviously, we're changing that bottom part anyway. Um, overall, not too bad. You can see how crusty that bottom bit was. So that's completely gone. And um, the corners, and fantastic, they don't seem too bad. So I might get over keeping the corners on this one. Um, as I say, just cleaning it up and cure rusting it, but we'll have to see how that one goes. Um, yeah, so the next step I'm going to get this lip off. It should be a case of just peeling it back with a pair of even those pliers. Uh, yeah, let's get on it. <laughs> Don't even need the pliers, it's coming off really well. So I've just got to grind off that bit there where that weld was. Make it all flat again, because when, when they built these doors, they put a little bit of seal on the inside of them, so you're going to have to clean that off. Um, so yeah, we'll just get it cleaned up. You don't need to see that bit, I'm only grinding stuff. Right, welcome back. So I've cleaned up all the lips, not too bad. I have got a bit more corrosion sort of up on this uh, far lip here, but we'll have to just do something with that. The actual sides aren't too bad. The corners are fairly good as well, so this repair panel is going to be a good one. Um, I've just put some tape on it all, on the corners, on uh, top of what I've done. I've just put my panel onto it like that, squeeze it over it. It is uh, a little bit larger than it needs to be, so it does go over it. We can make that fit anyway, some of the flanges. And I've just scribed the mark to sort of cut out those corner sections there, if you can see that. So I've scrubbed that mark. What I'm going to do, I'm not going to cut the full width of this because um, I just I want to try and keep these if I can in sort of these holes as well because it's just less work. So I've put a bit of a tape line just above them uh, or just below them, whichever way you're looking at your door. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this bit out here, leaving some of the corners in and I'm going to keep these flanges on the corners as well just so I've got a reference point. And then what I'll do is I'll put that on top and then I'll put a bit of tape on the back of here Scribe a line down it and then cut that one to, to match it so it should be right. The the good thing about keeping the corners is I've got something to level off onto onto this bit, so it should be good. Um in terms of I think that's oh that's what I was gonna say. The lip here on the magnum panel is ever so slightly um wider than the lip on the original the original lips about 20 mil all the way around in places it's 20 mil just less than as well and in places it's about 22 23 so just watch for that i'm gonna to have to grind the corners down it seems to be on most so i'll take the corners down a couple of mil just to get it all so it's 20 mil across it and then i know that this from here to here and from there to there should be exactly right so my door skin should fit straight back onto it of course we'll tack it in and check it anyway just in case but that's what I'm up to. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut these bits out. So I'll stick it on a time lapse and then we'll offer it up. So if uh, if you've watched my channel for a while, you will know the last time I used a grinder, in fact it's still in the uh, in the toolbox, the one that I did use, the last time I used a grinder with a cutting disc and I took my finger off. Um, I have used one since, thanks to Dave Jag and uh, DJC for that one. I did that about a month. I think I saw the plaster one actually when I used it. Um, so yeah, here goes nothing.
Okay, so welcome back. You join me about six days, three Christmas dinners, a full Christmas day, tree decorations down, haircut, and a shave later. Um, the last bit that you just saw then with the professor on the panel, I had to rush off, couldn't finish it. Um, I've come out here tonight, it's gone eight o'clock. Uh, I'm going to try and trim the panel down, try and get it welded in. Uh, but I'm going to have to just use these and a file because it's getting a bit too late. It's Sunday night, I don't want to be grinding it at past eight o'clock at night, so going old school. Anyway, Enough of me going on. Let's just get on bit. So, I did have a scribe at one point, but I can't find it for the life of me. And we're a little bit shallow. We're a bit too tight on this bit, basically. Edges are all okay. It's just this bit. So, to mark it, I'm going to use a center knife and a scribe line and then cut out with tin snips, hopefully. I just need to make sure that nothing moves when I'm making my line. So, that's right there. Give me a little line to go by. I don't know if you can see that picking up there, but it's giving me a little line. Anyways, try with the old tin snips to cut this off now. Right, so I've got that fitting pretty much exactly how I want it. So my method of welding is going to be a seam weld all the way down. Obviously take it in stage, so do a bit, 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 you know what I mean? So spread the heat across the panel. I have been told these can walk very easily. Um, so I just do little bits. Now I could have obviously flanged it down the, down the inside of it and plug welded it. It's not too structural, so that would have been a, an okay method. But given where it is, where I'm cutting the rust out, I just kind of thought, well, that's quite a strong part of the panel anyway, on, on this side. Um, so we'll go for it. And I mean, you're not going to see any of this. Round these bits on the corners, it would be very difficult to get a nice, neat flange there. You would have to seam well that anyway. So what you end up with, you end up with like a flange on this bit, but the rest of it, you have to seam well anyway. So for what it's worth, cracking up the compressor, getting the flange tool out, I'm just going to seam weld it. So here it goes. So, obviously, if you didn't know, Clark MiG 135TE Turbo on pub gas. Um, settings are one, max, I'm sort of between six and seven. I think Keith Miller does the same thing as me. Um, we'll just see how it goes and play about those settings. So, here we go. Hopefully, I get those buttery shots.
All right, so the corners are all welded in as much as I want to do them. There was a bit of a bigger gap at this side, um, so that took a little bit of filling with weld. The top there's a little bit rusted, uh, rusted. Um, not obviously that bit, that we know that bit is, but that's quite thin at the top there. So I might have to do something with that. Uh, for the most part, it has welded, I don't know if you can see it, fairly nicely down there. Uh, like I say, that bit's ugly. And then this side, uh, very much the same sort of story, so quite thin up at the top here. Um, but for the most part, fairly nice, bit of a bigger gap there than what I'd liked, but we make do. Um, so yeah, that's welded up. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to flip it around to the other side and weld that bit from there because it's going to be easier to grind back afterwards. Um, the reason I did them ones because it's going to be easier to grind back on the front of it. Um, so it'll be easier to grind them back and it will be on the inside. But th for this little bit here, because obviously that ridge is there, I'll cut into it. So I'm going to flip it around and we'll grind it on that side. So. Right, well, as you can see, still need to repair these bits up here, um, but not too bad, I'll just come out well that into that flange layer. I've actually gone a little bit further down than what I wanted, but there we go. Yes, I blew through a few times there. Like I said, the gap at that side was really bad. But there's the welds. I don't think they're too bad. The issue that I'm having um, is obviously it's cold in here, so when I'm breathing into my mask, it's fogging up, so I can't see all the time. But all things considered, I don't think that's too bad. And then on the other side, I'll show you them as well. So you can see the penetration. Can you see that? No, it's beautiful penetration, is that? Absolutely beautiful. Yep, blew through there. But all in all, I'm quite pleased with it. All I'm gonna do now, if you remember in the, in the other episode, I took some measurements. Now, I don't know if you can see the very faint blue lines that I've put on one here, one here, and one here. So I measured it in three places. And then if you can see them markings just there. So that was 475 mil, 476 mil, and 472 mil. And that was from, the, the, from that lip there. So against that lip, like that, straight down. And it was to the bottom of the, um, sort of the returned edge on here. I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing just there. Uh, this bit here so where it sort of folds back on itself not the actual flange because we know where that is so I'm just going to measure that and just see what we are coming out with so what do we say on there 475 it's 474 is that the right place 474 what do we say there 476 we have got 4.75 and this side was 4.72 which 4.71 so it looks like I'm about a mil too short but 
Watson Mill on a Mini. It's not a right lot, is it? So, uh, yep, yeah, happy with that. So, next episode, when it's a bit lighter, we'll linish these welds back, repair the edges, and then it's door skin time. What I am going to do quickly is I'm just going to put the hinges on and just try the, the door frame in the aperture. And I might even try and see what the door skin's like on the actual frame as well. All right then. So, first impressions. The skin seems to be twisted a little bit, um, but I don't expect anything less from a magnum panel, really. It's, uh, it's nothing that won't come in when we start bending these flanges over. So you can see that it's kind of flush there. Then at the top, there's a bit of a gap. So when I pull it down, obviously it pops that end up. So it's, it has got a bit of a twist in it, but like I say, it's nothing that I don't think will, will sort itself out. The kind of important things are, is that underneath just, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, just, there you go, so there you go, that hole lines up there. Uh, so we, we bolt that, we nut and bolt that, we make sure that lines up. I think there's a bolt on that side, might not be. I'm lying to you. So we make sure we put a nut and bolt in there. Obviously we've got a seam weld, then bits, just there and there. And then I want to basically clean up the flanges again, make sure the inside is absolutely spotless, get all this crappy transit paint off, zinc prime it, and then tiger seal, we'll put a thin layer of tiger seal on the inside of this flange here, and then we'll bend it over, not only will it give a bit of water, waterproof protection, but it will also help it stick. So, um, a bit of an improvement from the factory. So we're just gonna be careful. Now, I've tried the frame in the aperture, and it does fit. Um, obviously, I haven't tried the hinges on it, because I'm gonna have to take back off anyway to get the uh, frame on, because you've got to fold it over, and it'll get in the way of these. But the, the, the frame does fit. So what I might do quickly, actually, while I'm here, I might just measure from there up to the top. Cause I've got, again, I've got some little lines up at the top there where I've marked it. So I'll just measure them quickly. I've written on the old door skin over there what they are. Um, and yeah, we'll see what that's looking like. But that's for another episode because we have run out of time. I need to tidy it up. Um, and yeah, that's all I can do for tonight. I can't really do anything else. Still got some of my pairs to do. So, what I want to say is, because it's New Year, been a couple of days, whatever. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. Um, Happy New Year to everyone that watches this, this video. Happy New Year to all subscribers, old and new. Um, I've really enjoyed doing this build. Obviously, you've seen it come from uh, a car that's been off the road for quite a few years to being MOT'd and roadworthy. You've seen me driving it, you've seen me tinkering with it. You've seen me welding it, and I'm doing the doors. Um, it's all it's all coming to fruition now. Um, the last bits I've got to do is going to be the front end. Um, now I'm not going to change the, the, the whole front end. It, the, the wings and the, the front panel are new. I didn't put them on. Someone's put them on and they've filled the, the seams in, which I don't like. And the uh, scuttle needs changing. But as well as the scuttle, the top dash rail, I think, is going to need changing as well. So there are two things I need to do. Quite expensive panels. I don't want to put in magnum on them. I want them to be heritage. So that's... I'm in talks with them at the minute. Um, so the front end will be getting done and then the whole car is going to get painted a completely different colour. I don't know if I've mentioned what colour it is. I don't know if I'm going to mention what colour it is. You'll have to wait and see. Um, but for now anyway, I'm going to get some metallic Quicksilver from Halfords and do the inside of these doors, the same colour as the front of the car. And I might even give it a bit of a dusting on the back of it just to make it look so it's all one colour because I'm sick of driving a car that's all shiny and silver and then all grey and primer. So um, that's something I may do because the painting's not going to happen for a little while yet. But anyway, I've got more things to get on with, like getting these doors sorted out. So join for the next episode uh, where we'll see more of that. And like I say, Happy New Year. Let 2020 be everyone's year. I hope you all get your minis on the road if they're not already. I hope you absolutely smash things. So yeah, thank you very much, everybody. You've been an absolute pleasure. All the best. God bless.